Now to install your agents and controllers, you need to get a separate ISO image from MSDN, or you might already have this media. Specifically, you need the Visual Studio Agents 2010 installation disk, and you can see it's shown here on this slide. Once you have that, you want to install and configure at least one controller and multiple agents. Once they're installed, you'll run the configuration and that will let you set up some of the properties and such. There's a great reference shown here on this MSDN article link. And I've also recorded a walkthrough of installation of the Visual Studio Load Test agents and controllers on my blog, which you can find at the URL shown here, bit.ly slash R-O-B-T-U-P. I will show a little bit of this in this module, but I don't want to walk through the whole installation process because it does take a little bit of time and I think you'll be able to handle it with this screenshot driven walkthrough. When you launch the ISO, you'll see a setup screen like this one. In my case, I've already installed the controller and agent, so you see these showing up as repair uninstall, but in, when you first do it, it'll list those as install. Once you have done this, you need to configure these. If you're not using domain security, you'll find that you need to configure the agents and controllers to use the same user account. Otherwise, they won't be able to talk to one another. Also, you'll be able to view which agents are set up from within Visual Studio. If you go under the Test tab and click Manage Test Controller, assuming that you are running the controller or that you can connect to it, you'll see something like what I have shown here. So in my case, I'm running on localhost, which is my Steve IBP desktop, and I've set up two control or one controller two agents. The agents are my laptop, which is my Dell E6500, and I also have an agent running on localhost. So you can see both of them are shown here. 